John Hagee Ministries, fulfilling the commandment of taking all the gospel to all the world. On today's telecast, Pastor John Hagee's sermon, The Antichrist is Here. The Antichrist is called the Beast, which means he's totally ruthless, brutal without feeling, kills without remorse. One of the Antichrist name in Scripture is Son of Tradition, which literally means the chief son of Satan. Think about this. Whenever God wanted to save the world, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Whenever Satan wants to destroy the world, he's going to send his chief son to murder, to rob, and to kill. One third of the earth's population is going to die in his reign. What will the Antichrist do when he comes to power? The Bible says, by peace he will destroy many. Say that with me. By peace he will destroy many. Stay tuned for the conclusion of The Antichrist is Here. What lies on the edge of life? Do we really die, or is there life after death? One man is about to find out. Here are what people are saying about Escape from Hell. Without a doubt, one of the greatest evangelistic movies ever made. Escape from Hell is a great movie, a thriller, and masterfully produced. If this doesn't get someone to thinking about life without Christ, nothing will. Escape from Hell. John Hagee Ministries is proud to present this new motion picture from the creators of Final Exit and The Gathering. Escape from Hell is the most popular film ever offered by John Hagee Ministries, and you can own this thought-provoking film. Get ready for a lively discussion of life after death with any group that sits down to watch this unique motion picture. Visit our website, jhm.org, or call and ask for Escape from Hell. It's offer K263. We know life can get extremely busy these days. Avoid the clutter, simplify your life, and go paperless. Continue to make a difference taking all of the gospel to all of the world and to all generations. There are no checks or dates to remember and no stamps to buy. It's automatic. You'll never have to worry about forgetting to mail it in. You can even choose the date for your monthly withdrawal. Call our toll-free number and simply request to go paperless. With this gift, you are giving all of the gospel to all of the world and to all generations. Mark your calendars for the 10th Annual Christians United for Israel Washington Summit on July 13th and 14th. And now the conclusion of The Antichrist is Here. Black Sabbath, a satanic ritual, is being planned in Oklahoma City in a major auditorium where Satan will be worshipped. A shocking fact that millions of Americans are looking for joy of the coming, not of Jesus Christ, but of the Antichrist. I want you to understand, when the church is gone, the world is going to be glad we're gone. They're going to be glad we're gone. And I want to tell you something. We'll be glad to be gone. We'll be in heaven and you're getting ready to experience seven years of hell on earth called the tribulation. Revelation 13, 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for is the number of man, and the number is 666. Now, let me say this. The satanic trinity is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Just as is, there is a God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three sixes. But six is the number of sin. Goliath of Gath was six cubits and a span. He had six fingers and six toes. But the Hebrew language gives us the positive ID of the Antichrist. In the Hebrew language, every letter of the alphabet has a numerical value. So when you know the letters of the name of the Antichrist, you calculate that, you count the numbers of the beast, and if it comes out 666, that's the guy. Let me give you an illustration. Take the name Hagee, for instance. H, 200 points. A, 25. G, 175. E, 125. E, 125. Add those up, that's 650 
living proof I'm not the Antichrist. <laughs> How will the Antichrist come to power? Revelation 13, 2 says he will get his power directly from Satan himself. And every person on the earth will, will be required to worship him, and those who do not will be killed. Historically, Hitler gave birth to the Third Reich, and his high command was occult in its, in its action. Hitler's leaders were all occultists. If you want to read the, the book, The Twisted Cross, it's a portrait of occultism. They were Satan's disciples. Anti-Semitism exploding now in Germany, France, England, Europe, and in America. People are terrified there will be a Fourth Reich. Well, let me confirm your worst fears. There is going to be a Fourth Reich, and it will include ten groups of nations. And their leader will actually be the Antichrist. And according to the Bible, he's going to make Adolf Hitler look like a choir boy. The Antichrist is called the beast, which means he's totally ruthless, brutal without feeling, kills without remorse. One of the Antichrist's name in Scripture is son of perdition, which literally means the chief son of Satan. Think about this. Whenever God wanted to save the world, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. Whenever Satan wants to destroy the world, he's going to send his chief son to murder, to rob, and to kill. One-third of the earth's population is going to die in his reign. What will the Antichrist do when he comes to power? The Bible says, by peace he will destroy many. Say that with me. By peace he will destroy many. How is that going to happen? He's going to make an appearance on the world stage as a man of peace. That means he's going to make peace with people with a full intention when he makes the peace of cord to break it. He will destroy wondrously with peace. When you sign a peace accord, people expect you to live up to it. They drop their guard. The moment they drop their guard, he's going to devour them. He will seize the situation of the Middle East crisis. This is the Bible's point of view, not mine. He's going to settle the dispute between the Arab nations and Israel. This two-state solution, this peace accord has been sought since 1948, and no presidential administration has been ever able to make it real. But there is coming a man of sin, the Antichrist, who comes as a peacemaker, and the first thing he's going to do is make a seven-year peace treaty with Israel with the intention of breaking it three and a half years after it happens. That's how he's going to destroy with peace. That's why the Bible says when they cry, Peace, peace, then cometh sudden destruction. The Bible says he's a king of fierce countenance. That's why saying the Antichrist will make Hitler look like a choir boy He's going to be totally ruthless. He will understand dark sentences, Daniel says. What does that mean? It means that he will have a satanic power to know the unknowable. Just as a spirit-filled person can have a divine revelation of the Holy Spirit, so this monster of sin will have Satan's anointing to know the unknowable that other people can't know. He will cause craft to prosper. He's going to bring a worldwide economic revival because there's going to be a global economic crash. The global economy is electronically connected. What happens to Europe happens in America. What, what affects America affects Europe. And if a sudden circumstance all falls together, when it goes down, it will go down like a house of cards and instantly. He will force every man and woman on the earth to receive that mark. He's going to create a cashless society. You can go into the supermarket and flash your right hand under an ultraviolet light, and computers will transfer the funds from the bank's computer to the store's account where you're shopping. This is technically possible right now. There, 
is enough computer power to transact every financial transaction on earth right now. We can do that. Next, the cashless society will be celebrated because they're going to say it will end violent crime. It will. But there are some computer hackers that are going to have a heyday. Some of the worldwide drug problem will be solved, but it will be able to track every person on the earth. It will create a world without borders. There won't be any immigration problems because it makes no difference what border you track. They know where you are, they have the number, and they know exactly what you bought and who you paid and where it was to the last ounce in detail. So it doesn't make any difference where you are on planet Earth. The global new world order will have a track on you. He will begin his reign with a seven-year peace treaty and break it. Bible says he will be shot in the head, and he's going to recover miraculously, emulating the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He immediately is going to start pursuing the Jewish people who will flee to Petra, which is in Jordan. If you've ever seen Petra, it's a rock fortress. God is going to preserve the Jewish people there for three and a half years, just like he preserved them when they were in the wilderness. He will feed them. He will cause water to gush out of a rock. He will preserve them. Why won't the Antichrist pursue them? Because the Bible says tidings from the east will terrify him. What's the tidings from the east? China is marching down the Euphrates River that is dry with an army of 200 million people. That's enough to upset anybody. And he is getting his forces in alignment for what is called the Battle of the Armageddon. He will have a false prophet that will be leading people into religious deception. He will cause a statue to speak. Think about that. There's a man who says that he is spiritual and he can cause a stone image to start talking. That's real power. Hear me. If all you're looking for is a miracle, you're wide open to follow the Antichrist and the false prophets because they're going to have a big league signs and wonders ministry. Listen closely. If signs and wonders do not bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ, you are watching a false prophet whose anointing does not come from the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says that there will be people on the day of judgment that will stand before God and say, didn't we do many wonderful things in your name? And the Lord will say, depart from me, worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Think about that. The Antichrist is going to set up his throne in the city of Jerusalem in a physical attempt to prevent Jesus Christ, the rightful heir to the throne, from returning to earth. Jesus spoke of this in Matthew 24, 15. The Antichrist is going to defy the Lord himself from coming back to this earth and taking his rightful place as the son of David to be the king of kings and lord of lords. And as he looks into heaven, according to Revelation 13, 6, he opens his mouth and blasphemes against God. He blasphemes the name of God. He blasphemes those who live in heaven. And he's saying that if you had followed me, look where you would be right now. And God in heaven says, that rips it. That's the John Hagee version of my new Bible. <laughs> That's enough. It takes him a half a chapter to say that, by the way. Revelation 19:11 records the final invasion to planet Earth. It's not from the north, the south, the east, or the west, but it comes from heaven. John says in Revelation 19:11, I saw the heavens opened, and he that sat upon a white horse was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. It's the Lord Jesus Christ coming to Israel 
coming to Jerusalem, coming to destroy the enemies of the state of Israel, coming to the battle of Armageddon to annihilate the Antichrist and the armies which follow him. And he hath on his vesture and on his tie a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Listen to me, friends of Israel. When the last battle on earth has been fought and the last bullet has been fired, Jesus Christ, the Son of David, is going to destroy the enemies of Israel and Jerusalem will be preserved and Israel will survive. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. I'm going to talk more about this next Sunday. But the Bible says, God speaking word for word, every nation that come against Jerusalem, I'm going to cut them to pieces. You can read that in Zechariah 12 and 2. Well, let me quote it. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Cup of trembling. When you are drinking a cup of coffee and you get news that shake you up, the cup trembles in your hand. I'm going to make it a cup of trembling unto all people. All that burden themselves with Jerusalem will be cut to pieces. I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. End of quote. That's God Almighty talking. That's the defender of Israel talking. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hello, Russia. Hello, Iran. There's a spy in the sky. He's very Jewish, and he's watching you. This in closing. When is the Antichrist? going to make his appearance, read my lips, after the church is gone. There are people saying, the church is going to go through the tribulation, isn't that wonderful? No, meathead, that's not wonderful. Read the whole book. Let me give you five Bible reasons in five minutes to prove biblically that there is no chance the church is going through the tribulation. These are very simple. In Revelation 4, St. John the Apostle, the author of the book of Revelation, hears a voice from heaven saying, come up here. Say that with me. Come up here. John leaves the Isle of Patmos and goes into heaven through the open door. Revelation 4.1. And he saw God on the throne, and he saw the 24 elders, 12 elders for the Old Testament, 12 elders for the New Testament. They were clothed in white robes. They were wearing gold crowns. They were seated on thrones. The Bible says the New Testament church would be robed and crowned and made to sit together in heavenly places with the Lord. This, my friends, is the bride of Christ in Revelation 4. Now, in Revelation 6, the Antichrist comes riding out on his white horse. I don't want to overload you, but 4 comes before 6. <laughs> We're gone, and then the imposter, the Antichrist, rides out on the stage of history. <laughs> How many of you got that? Good. Two. The Bible calls Jesus our blessed hope. What's hopeful about going through the tribulation? Come to Jesus so we can all get killed together. No. We're leaving here in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the trump of God shall sound and the dead shall be raised and we which are alive shall follow. It's called the rapture of the church. We are leaving here. Three, the Bible never says the church is going through the tribulation. It does say all that live godly in Christ Jesus will have tribulation. But dear God, everyone that gets married has tribulation. 
but it's not the great tribulation. And you didn't marry the Antichrist on either side of the breakfast table. Four, the church is mentioned more than 20 times in the first three chapters of Revelation, and it's not mentioned again until the 19th chapter. Why are we missing from the first of Revelation 4 and don't show up again until Revelation 19? Why? Because the church is gone. That's why. We're not here. And I say this in closing. There's only one way of escaping the seven years of living hell produced by the Antichrist. And that's to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Christ came to this earth to die for your sins. He's anxious to forgive you. I was raised in a denomination where God woke up every morning with a migraine looking for a new way to kick the backside of every person who breathed. There is no God like that. The God of heaven is a loving Father. He knows what sins you've done. He knows what you're thinking about doing that's not good. That's scary, but that's a fact. And he's anxious to forgive you. He knows all that you've done, and he loves you anyway. He's willing to make you his child. He will give you the gift of eternal life. But a gift when it's offered, has to be received to become effective. The gift of salvation and eternal life can be yours right now. Certainly not asking you to join the church, but I am asking you to join Jesus Christ because that's the best thing going on planet Earth. In his name, I offer it to you. It's yours for the asking. Can we stand to our feet? Give the Lord praise in the house. The Bible says the most precious thing you have is your eternal soul. The Bible offers 70 years on this earth. But it says when you breathe your last breath, you're going to step into an eternity that never ends. A hundred million years from now, you're going to be alive somewhere, either in the presence of God's tomorrow or in outer darkness, and that's your choice. Jesus Christ made it possible for you to have everlasting life at the cross. And that's what I'm offering you in his name. The church cannot save you, but Jesus can. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. You're in this room and you know that there is unconfessed sin in your life. And if the rapture of the church happened in the next 60 seconds, you would not be ready to stand before the Lord in judgment day. You would like to receive everlasting life as the gift from God the Father. Would you slip your hand up? I want to have a prayer with you today. God bless you. God bless you, son. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you in the back. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless this family. God bless you right there on the front row, going through the balcony. Raise your hand high. God bless you, and I see you there. I see those hands in the back there. I see you there. I see you there. I see you there. Dozens receiving the Lord today. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Those of you that are watching by television across the nation and around the world can pray this prayer also because there is no distance in prayer. God can hear you in your living room wherever you happen to be praying this prayer, pray this prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, Our Father, which art in heaven I come into your presence, I come into your presence by, the by the authority of Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And today I accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. 
I will follow him. I will obey his teachings. And from this moment forward, he is Lord of all. Thank you for forgiving me. And I receive the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. Amen. Raise your hand for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you his peace now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. Jesus said, when you see these signs, lift up your heads and rejoice. Your redemption draweth nigh. My sermon series, Prophecy for Tomorrow, is the detailed word picture of the future as given by a news announcer. He will say, We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important message. One day, people across the world will hear that because the church has been raptured. For them, it will be too late. You don't have to be there. Get this sermon series today. The Bible tells us of terrible things happening on earth in the end days. Find out how you can escape these coming events by getting this sermon series today. Call the number on the screen or visit our website at jhm.org.